Here's a fun story. I ordered a super cheap base online for a project I had in mind. But when the package arrived, I unboxed it to find a guitar. How did that happen? So after some thinking and wanting to avoid a bothersome return process from an already iffy seller, I decided to turn lemons into lemonade. If I'm short a bass, why not just make my own? I've already done a bass to guitar conversion. It's such a good idea, in fact, let's just pretend it was my original vision. This is Kevin from Said Too Much. So quick glimpse on the future cam, you can see we have a three string design, which isn't unheard of. It gives you something simple and light when you need to stay in the supporting role, but it still lets you steal the show if you want to. Now there are several reasons why I chose a three string design for this conversion. First, fitting four bass saddles on a Fender style guitar neck gives you about the same string spacing as your average Fender style bass. That would have been fine, but the strings would unevenly hang over the six poles of the single coil pickups. With three strings, each string could hang evenly between the poles, giving them each a consistent, if yet slightly lower volume, allowing us to go ahead and hear what the Strat style pickups sound like out of curiosity. Remember, bass pickups aren't even strangers to the idea of between pole spacing, if that's still bothering you. Now the next reason I chose this design is because of tension. Guitar necks usually have something like 20 pounds per string or 120 pounds total on them. So at a reasonable bass tension of 40 pounds per string, three strings would match that 120 pound mark. This being a pretty cheap guitar already, I didn't want to risk snapping the neck. Now the last reason is I thought the machine heads would aesthetically fit nicer in the pre-existing holes. I was also kind of thinking that eventually maybe those other three holes could accommodate extra guitar strings for a six string double course bass project. But we need to take things one step at a time here. We're already stuffing a lot into this project. I always love a tremolo on my other Strat style guitars, usually in a dive only mode though. But the simplest bridge solution I could think of would be just a stationary bridge like on most basses. This of course required me to fill in the cavity after removing the guitar hardware, which I did with just a simple block of scrap wood I cut down to size. I simply hammered it in at a tight fit to begin with and secured it a little more with some epoxy. Then I stained it just a little bit darker cause I had some wood stain laying around. I bought a couple of individual base saddles and lining them up where the mounting holes should go, I was thankfully able to drill straight into the original body and not have to worry about my patchwork. It's a little crooked maybe? I have to admit I was being a little careless with my measurements that night. I think it's alright, but remember to measure twice everyone. I was cautious to leave a little bit of a gap on the side to wire a couple of things through the empty spring section of the tremolo. This included the secret part I intended for the base project I had in mind in the first place as well as ground wiring to the new bridge. I connected each saddle with tin foil to the ground wire, then I just put some electrical tape over everything to secure it and make it look a little nicer. I'll talk more about the other pickup in a future video, but again, the conversion idea turned out to be an obvious project on its own. When stringing it up, there was one last issue where the thickest string, as thick as the standard bass low B string, mind you though, didn't fit well into the bass saddles I bought. Thinking I could just hammer it fully in there, I eventually got it jammed enough to at least hold tension, so it's fine for now, right? I'll probably slightly file down the sides in the future. The bass machine heads fit perfectly in the holes of the guitar machine heads with just some slight enlarging using increasingly bigger drill bits. I opted to leave the other string holes alone for now, as far as fitting these slightly thicker strings into them, I opted to just unravel the winding after soldering a spot above the nut to keep everything still tightly wound. Usually bass strings have a slight taper, but because the guitar is a shorter scale, the taper doesn't start nearly soon enough. Luckily I'm no stranger to making strings fit. Now the last time I had to mod a nut for an extra string, I filled the whole thing in with epoxy and recut everything. To subtract some strings this time, I opted to just buy a whole new nut altogether. It's a thin graphite nut blank that came a little oversized. I removed the old plastic nut by slightly cutting it loose on the edges and hammering it out from there. 
I was relieved the new one fit pretty snug. Just had to trim a little excess from one side with a hacksaw. I bought what I thought were special tools for cutting the actual slots in the nut, but I found the hacksaw and crude file I've always used worked best. I measured where each of the slots should go by eye, comparing it to the old nut, and very painstakingly and time-consumingly cut it to the width the strings needed in a depth I was okay with. I may have opted for a slightly higher action, thinking I could always lower it a lot easier than raising it in the future. Lastly, when stringing it up, I noticed that the bass machine heads suspend the strings slightly higher than the guitar machine heads would. So the angles at the nut were too obtuse, which created rattling, poor sustain, and even let the strings pop out of their slots sometimes. I couldn't just recycle the original guitar string trees because they held the strings awkwardly too close together and unnecessarily low. Buying some actual bass string trees solved everything. First of all, intonation was really easy to set up. It stays pretty much in tune despite the shorter scale length. But I don't think I could go much lower than a bass E, so don't get any ideas. The action is high, mostly out of fear like I said earlier, but it's not unheard of. Pretty comparable to the action on the callium, which it needs for the huge wavelengths it produces. The string spacing is slightly noticeable. I could still skip to the top and bottom strings pretty easily, but it is wider than anything I've ever played. At least now you can really get your fingers in there for popping or thumping. As long as you at least lower one pickup considerably to help get in between an unfortunate compact pickup placing. Why couldn't Fender have the foresight of a strata bass? So what do you all think? Is it more guitar than bass? Is it more genty than a drop E8 string? Go ahead and let me know all of your ideas you might have for this thing. There's still the original test I'm gonna do with the piezo pickup, and truth be told, I only use the neck pickup in this demo. This is mainly because the wiring for this thing came faulty. Long story short, I was gonna do a full unboxing and review for this guy, but it would have turned out to be just an angry rant. And again, this is something I didn't even intend to buy. Maybe I should have returned it, but I'm hoping you guys are glad I didn't. So stay tuned, or check the description if there already are some updates by the time you're seeing this. For now though, enough said. For early video access, raw instrument tracks, and more exclusives, find our community on Patreon and consider adding your support. Said too much.